Hey everyone, this is my attempt at creating the ultimate list of Ruby on Rails string helper methods. So these aren't native just to Ruby on Rails, but they do come some underlying from the Ruby programming language itself. And Rails kind of built upon the string class of Ruby and made these additional methods that included in the framework. So you can use them in your own arsenal. Um, I think these probably were mostly created when they created the framework um, as helper methods to reuse because that's kind of programming one-on-one it's kind of don't repeat yourself in many er scenarios so the idea behind that is like when you're creating generating a new model for your app maybe you know the naming convention takes a certain shape and that's kind of rails doing its thing based on that logic like when a table is plural but the model is singular, all those things that are bells and whistles under the hood that feels like magic, even though in reality it's just Ruby being Ruby and then the framework doing a lot of work for you so you don't have to spend all your time configuring, which is the beauty of it all. So I wanna explore these little string helper methods with you. There's quite, there's quite a few, so I'll try to be quick. The blog posts will go into a little more depth if you wanna check those out. So definitely check the link in the description for that. Uh, so let's kick things off. I made it a quick vanilla Rails app. It's called String Method Fun here. Already did that by off screen. I do want to go into Rails console to do this stuff. And one little gotcha with this is you need to have access to a helper function to do these. Um, it's basically behind the scenes, it's including a class that's part of the view framework. That's a view, a view layer helper method framework. I can't remember the name of it, but just know if you type helper preceding these, it's going to work usually. So let's kick it off with probably one of the most common ones is pluralize. So plural, and this takes basically how it sounds. It takes a count, whatever you feed it to and pluralizes the string you give it. So in this case, maybe there's 25 and then we'll say user. So that's going to return 25 users since it's pluralized. So the count commonly in my apps is usually a, you know, active record database count. So something like user count, as I've shown you, we'll come back. Maybe you have a list of your users and they all change throughout the time. If you're first kicking off your app, you're going to have zero users. But what if you have one user, then that you want that text to kind of update dynamically. So you could do that and this would compensate. So all you would have to change is that count and it changes back to one user. So little dynamic stuff, little magic hidden behind the scenes. It's just something you don't have to worry about over time. So it's a really helpful method. I found myself using it quite a bit. If you want to make something the inverse of plural, there is one called singular lies. So we go helper dot singular. I'm going to have a heyday trying to spell all these. So I apologize. Singular lies. This you wouldn't actually pass anything to. It's essentially going to be um, a string method you would pass to it. So we could do, I think you could do it like this. Let's see. We'll say like tables. Yeah, that's not going to work actually. Let's see if it works this way. Yeah, that works out of the box like that. So some of these are going to work behind the scenes without needing to do this view helper thing. Um, we'll find out as we go, cause I'm kind of, I kind of forget which one's which, but we'll figure it out. But then you could do, um, the same with say something that's already singular. So maybe, um, equipment, I think it's from the docs. I'm stealing this one. So equipment dot singular lies, and that's just going to come back as singular again. So that's just a quick, quick, fun way to do that. Um, I'm going to clear these out as I go to save my sanity. Um, truncates one I use a ton. So this is, I'm assuming is going to use the helper function. So we'll say truncate, and then you could say lorem ipsum blah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll do that. And then you're going to pass like a length to it. And that's going to be, oops, I did the wrong quotes at the beginning. So let me fix that. We'll turn around and truncate that so that it's going to actually be a number you pass to it. So let's just say like 10 to make sure this truncates and that will truncate to that amount. And then uh, as you go, whatever you need to do, you can truncate at will. So change it to a hundred, then it's suddenly longer. And then maybe half that 
do that again so it actually does it maybe 20 there we go so now you can just adjust that length based on what you need very useful for something like a blog post excerpt or something like that unless i can do something with tailwind that's kind of a cool way to do that as well there's a, a css hack for doing that so the next one will be up case and down case these are pretty self-explanatory so if you have just a do my name andy dot up case this is part of ruby down case we go to the inverse say Andy, maybe I'll do one letter not, and you have to spell out the whole method. There we go. And that comes back like so. So those are pretty basic Ruby. You will use that in Rails too. So it's just one of those things you might have to do to normalize text or something, some sort of input from a form. You never know. Um, it's one of those things that will come in handy. This one I use a lot too. So we'll say titleize. I think this would be a helper method. So tell title lies spelt weird. I misspell it religiously. So hopefully I did this time quick brown box. Oh, let's see. That's not right. No method error. So maybe we won't do that. Does this work like that? I think I just spelt it wrong. Title the quick brown box. Let's see if we can do this. Title lies. There we go. String methods, they're kind of if, if or else in some of these scenarios. So I apologize that it's not quite consistent. But that's essentially it. It takes each word and capitalizes it. Pretty simple, straightforward. There is one I think you could do called capitalize which just capitalizes the first letter. There you go. I don't even have that on my list. I just remember that. So I'll add that one. And then uh, another one, Camelize. So this might be something you need to normalize um, some sort of Ruby method. Maybe you're doing some meta programming. You never know like where you're um, inventing methods and, and you know from strings and then they're being called, all this fanciness. So we'll say uh, username. Well, obviously that will print username, but we need camelize. It's like that. So that kind of does the JavaScript-y look very common in JavaScript land. And then dasherize is another one. So if you want to add hyphens in your text, you could do that. So maybe I'll just say my name and then dasherize. Required to have something like this. Let's try it. If it's underscore does it come back yeah okay so it needs to be it's basically looking for underscores and if it does that it'll normalize it if it's not then it just returns a string like what you passed underscore is just the kind of the inverse of the camel case so if you want to convert camel case so username underscore it will convert back to that so it's just kind of going backwards humanize this one's one of my favorites it's kind of just like a a combination of stuff, but it's a from the docs. It says it capitalizes the first word, replaces underscores with spaces, and remove trailing ID. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of things. If you happen to have some stuff in your app that's just more generated from the framework itself, so like user ID or something. So if we say user ID, give it humanize. It will come back with just user. So it extracts that, that ID part. That's a nice little additive. Um, another one I could do is maybe apples and bananas spelling. Yeah. And it kind of comes back with removing those underscores, capitalizing the first letter. So it's, so this is kind of more or less under the hood. So it would be uh, model relevant table names, something like, you know, user model, something like that. So if you have user and you just use this method tableize. I could spell it goes back to users so again so if you if you were on your rails app you're going to run rails generated model user and then some attributes this is what's going on behind the scenes i'm almost certain so then you get that cool little tableized version of it because we need to pluralize the table name so if you say table eyes users so that's kind of a nice thing you could do it with another class name. So maybe let's do a multi-name class. We'll just use Apple table as, and well, there we go. And then it goes 
back does the underscore and adds the S at the end. So that's a cool little hack to get that going. That one you might have to pull out and remember. It's hard to remember that one I've found. I use this one a lot. So it's creating more of a SEO friendly URL structure or something based on a slug or whatever you want to do in your URLs. You do John Doe and then you do parameterize. comes back as that was lowercase with the dash or hyphen and you could go to town here and just do another one I'll do it actually I'll do John Doe and a nice little gotcha is you can actually pass a preserve case true and it'll do the same thing but not lowercase so that's kind of nice uh, you can also, if you want to, take a separator and define what that will be. So in our case, maybe we want an underscore. And I'll just do it as a string. There we go. So that comes back as underscore and capitalized in that case. So that's just kind of going above and beyond if you want something very custom for your SEO friendly stuff. Namespaces. So maybe you have scopes in your app, uh, admin namespace, something like that. So maybe you have like admin users controller something like that. And then you want to use this one called demodularize. Demodularize, that one's a tough one to say. So it takes the, essentially the mo leftmost module off the mix and you're left with the user's controller in this case. And that can go a couple layers deep. So uh, not that you should do that, but you could. And then you can also do one that doesn't even have anything and it'll work. And then let's do one that's just a basic class. You'll see that it doesn't do anything. And then finally, a really crazy admin users, um, I don't know, billing controller. And it comes back with that. So basically it looks for these namespace colons, those things, and then kind of extracts or cuts it from there as you go down the, the pipe. So you can actually call it on an empty string and it's empty back. So as expected, nothing comes back from that. Let's see, uh, you can do one that's called foreign key. So this is common when you, of course, are generating columns. And again, it's one of those that Rails probably does mostly under the hood that you shouldn't really need to do a lot, but you could. Uh, so you could say um, user dot foreign key. Oh man. I apologize for my spelling. So that comes back with user ID. So it gives you basically the, the, the convention of making a user ID or an ID for that kind of class that would normally be the Rails convention. So you could go crazy and make one that's admin session, something like that, say foreign key, and it will give you a session ID. It ignores that leftmost uh, namespace or class. And the same thing, if you have a multi-name class, maybe it's a user foreign key, and it gives you the whole scope there. So it knows to incorporate user invoice and then also the ID, the suffix there. There is one more I have that is called classify, and that is something you can do just to pass a basic like people string, classify, and it's the coolest one to me because it knows, okay, this is plural for people, but we'll turn it into person because that's singular. So not only is it singular in the name, it's also singular in the context of the language. So I think this is always kind of like is a wow factor for me. Um, so maybe you have something that's pluralized like invoices and then you could do a classify too. And it goes back to invoice. You could do something like invoice line item classify then it goes back to that that is my pretty lengthy list on string helper methods i hope that was helpful again i have a blog post with more actual applicable examples in the description so check that out and i will see you guys next time peace